Mama Cat. George? Hello, my sniffers. My name is Marlene McCohen, and this is Vinny, my Gullah cockatoo. He is such a sweet little bird. And Vinny and I would love to welcome you to Parent Tip Tuesday. Today, we're going to continue our series about my specific birds and what it's like to live with this type of parrot. So today, we are doing Vinny, right Vinny? Hopefully, Vinny will be interested in staying to participate in this video because it's all about you, Vinny. Now, before I get started, I want to remind you, watch my Favorites Friday video because you can enter to win the tent giveaway, the little parrot tent. It's so cute. We're going to be doing that on Friday, so you still have time to watch the video, follow the rules, and enter because we will be choosing three very lucky winners. Right, Vinny? Maybe Vinny will help me. I have no idea. So let's talk about what it's like to have a bird like Vinny. For those of you who don't know anything about Gullah cockatoos, they're also called rose-breasted cockatoos. They're from Australia. They fly in very, very large flocks, sometimes 500 to 1,000 birds, which means that they are very social. So let's talk about what it's like to live with Vinny. Out of all of the cockatoos, I would say that these are some of the quietest in terms of screaming all day. In terms of when they do scream, they can be very loud and extremely playful and extremely cute. But that's where Vinny kind of differs. He tends to be really, really quiet. If you watched my Storytime Sunday last week and saw him get caught in my shirt, you'll hear that loud scream that he does. Well, Vinny does that when he's scared of something or sometimes when he is playing, but truthfully, he does that very rarely, although I know other cockatoos like Vinny that love to hang out and play and make noises like that all the time. So every bird is very, very different. Now, one thing about these cockatoos that makes them a little bit easier than other cockatoos is that they do like to have their alone time. So Vinny thrives on his moments when he gets to play with his own toys in his own area and his own space. Most of the time that means out of his cage because of course you know I advocate being engaged and not caged. So I put a lot of toys and things for Vinny to do on top of his cage because if I don't, he will go find a way to make a toy out of something himself. Namely, the walls, that pillow fort that he's looking into right now, the siding. You have to be really careful. These birds chew a lot, right, Vinny? On Parrot Station, one of my members just got a rose-breasted cockatoo and named it Vinny. I think if I remember correctly, I warned her. I said, hey, uh, you might not want to name it Vinny. Next thing, a video is posted of her Vinny destroying all of the newspapers on the wall that she put up. And I'm like, uh-huh, this is just the beginning. So that's one thing to know. They love to chew. So you have to be able to provide your cockatoo with a lot of different safe materials to chew up for them to be busy all day long because that's very important to them. If you don't, they're going to chew up anything that they can find. And in my case, with my Vinny, that can often be the walls or the molding or whatever he decided to get his beak on. Vinny loves boxes, but not exactly in a mating behavior sort of way. He just wants to peel all the layers off of the box. He's not even interested in making it like a nest. I mean, if it is that season, then I would be careful of that. But Vinny in general, if a new package comes to the house, like he walks down and he walks around and he investigates it. It's like a kid seeing candy or an adult seeing like a really beautiful car. You know, they get their eyes on it and they look at it and then they come over and closer. That's what Vinny is like with every single box that comes to the house. I can give Vinny a new box and he'll just play with it. 
by himself and entertain himself for hours and hours and hours. That's one thing that's really good about Vinny is he can be kind of a loner. And that is something that I've heard a lot of rose-breasted cockatoo owners say is that their bird doesn't mind hanging out alone and in fact prefers some alone time for a majority of the day. Now remember, alone time doesn't always mean locked up. It means that they just have a lot to do and a lot to play with and you don't need to be interacting with them all of the time. However, they love interaction. Vinny loves kisses and love. Vinny is actually my biggest love bug. Now, he loves kisses and cuddles. He doesn't exactly love to be pet in the way Jersey does, as you see, but if I do pet him, he has the silkiest feathers you would ever feel in your entire life. These cockatoos aren't exactly as cuddly as umbrellas or other kinds of cockatoos. You can cuddle them a little bit, you can pet them, you can definitely give them head scratches. Remember, every bird is different. Yours might be a cuddle bug. I can pick up Vinny and give him kisses. I just want to like eat him. I don't know how to explain it. He's just the sweetest, sweetest bird in that way. And here I am describing Vinny as the biggest love bug, but he keeps flying away from me. And that is something that is important to note and I'm gonna tell you why. A lot of these birds specifically tend to be moody. Vinny can give me so much love and you'll watch on my Instagram how he'll come in and kiss me and then leave and then kiss and then leave and he'll do that like 30 times in a row and his kisses are just so amazing and all the love is amazing. And then after like Sometime he's just like, thank you, I'm out, bye bye Like, and that's it. Like, there's no more trying with him. You know, he's like, I need my time now. Where's my box? Put me back. Or he'll just fly back himself. Speaking of flying, it's very important for these birds to be flighted. Oh, I'm sorry. I have to go. Vinny's gonna eat the wall. Speaking of flighted, it's really important that these birds get ample amount of exercise. So if you can keep them flighted or flight train them, that's the best thing for the bird as you see Vinny is. Sometimes it's hard to manage because I gotta make sure he doesn't chew that wall. But with some ample space and lots of things to play with because this is in his room right now so he's looking for new things to do then you could keep them quite entertained. Now, rose-breasted cockatoos also need the exercise of flying. So if you can have a flight-trained bird, that exercise is going to be so beneficial to your bird to prevent tumors and fatty liver disease and things like that that these birds are prone to. So remember, that's really important. So if you are looking into getting a cockatoo like Vinny, that's something to think about. Like, do you have kids? Do you keep the door open? Do you enjoy life outside? Are you able to flight train your bird? Are you able to keep your bird on a harness? Things like that. You have to be really prepared for that. And speaking of flying, here's something that I've heard a lot of you tell me, especially on Parrot Station. I hear this discussed and this actually applies to Vinny too. I've told you this before of why there were times that he wasn't able to fly. There were times that he was wing clipped, especially when I first rescued Vinny and I discovered this about his personality. It became a little dangerous, so we had to restart again with Vinny. So if you guys don't know already, Vinny is a rescue. He was brought to me by somebody who had needed a home for him and they didn't even really know where Vinny came from. And I swear to you, just like the Cody story, an hour before I was in the bird store kissing some sort of rose-breasted cockatoo there for the second year in a row and I said, I want a cockatoo like this one day. I kid you not, I go upstairs and I get a phone call saying, hey, do you still like birds? I have this bird that would be great for you. And that's how I got Vinny. However, I soon learned that as nice as Vinny was to me, which was very interesting considering he's done this to everybody else since then, Vinny, Vinny will plan very detailed flight attacks on innocent people. 
Wow, you really don't want to be in this video today. So what Vinny would do when we first got him, which we didn't know because he was the sweetest, most tame bird with me, he would first of all pretend that he wants a kiss from someone. And all the girls that met Vinny loved Vinny. So they would go in for a kiss. And I swear, I thought it was safe because he would kiss me so much and act like the sweetest bird. And then he would bite their lip and clamp onto it and not let go. Now you guys know that this does not mean that all birds do this and it does not mean that all rose-breasted cockatoos do this. I'm just telling you Vinny's history and Vinny's personality. But what he would do is if he wanted to fly to someone and if he landed on them, he would attack and he would clamp his beak onto their face or wherever he caught on, their back, their neck, their shoulder, and he would not let go. And then they would panic and he would panic and it would get worse and worse and worse and ultimately it would become a very dangerous situation. Now Vinny is not the only cockatoo that I've heard of like this. And it's funny because they have the smallest beaks out of almost all of the cockatoo species out there, yet, they are able to clamp on so good that it can frighten the life out of you. I swear there are people in our house more scared of Vinny than Rocky. And that's very interesting because Rocky's beak is so huge. So you have to be prepared if you get a cockatoo like Vinny to handle those kind of situations because like I said, he's not the only one that I've heard of with those behaviors. And keep in mind, they are very moody. Vinny has gotten way past this. Now if he flies and lands on someone, I'll still have that instinct to say, don't move, don't panic but he also won't bite. Although I did tell you guys he bit George the other day on his back. So that did happen, but Vinny really has come a long way. Such a long way that obviously you see that he's flighted now and he handles the house. People are not scared of him the way they used to be. He's gone through a lot of training with me in this house. So Vinny is actually doing really well. But you have to be prepared depending on how young your bird was when you got him, if you got him from somewhere else, who in the family he takes to. That's why these birds are not a good bird to start with. Really no cockatoos are, but it's just something that you need to be aware of. The good, the bad, the unpredictable. When you get a bird, do you set out imagining that you're gonna have this flying Hitchcock bird at you, like trying to attack the hell out of you? No, you probably don't imagine that at all but that's what it could be like. And I tell you the worst on purpose because I want you to be prepared. I don't want birds out there being abandoned because nobody told them these things. Do they talk? Yes, actually they can talk and they can make noises and they can do really cute things. My Vinny doesn't really talk in a way that you know what he's saying. Sometimes he does and sometimes amazingly, he repeats things right after us. That sounds exactly like the sentence I said, but he sounds so much like an R2-D2 or something that I don't know if that is in fact what he said. So that's always interesting. But there are other rose-breasted cockatoos that talk so much better than Vinny and so much clearer. So if you set out to find a bird because you want a talking bird, well, you should never do that because you may get a bird like Picasso that doesn't talk at all or like Vinny that talks in such a way that you don't even know what he's saying. Right, Vinny? And you have to be willing to accept that because not all birds will talk well and not all birds will talk the same. Same with the Jersey. She talks, she says a few things, but she sounds like a bird while there are other cockatoos that sound so great when they talk. So you just don't know what you're going to get. And that's a really important thing to know before you buy a bird. But what else is it like living with Vinny? Vinny needs a really large space to play and hang out. Vinny likes to jump from spot to spot and play and hang upside down and do a lot of interesting things. But Vinny's also a little bit older for sure. I don't know how old he was when I got him, but I was sure when I looked at him that he was definitely older than 15. I could just tell just because I know birds. So Vinny, I think, had passed a lot of the hormonal stages. And because of that, I think he's a lot more chill. He likes his alone time a lot. He likes to be busy with himself a lot. That doesn't mean you could get this kind of bird and let them hang out. It means that you have to be providing the entertainment for them to hang out 
out themselves if they want, but with you if they want. Now, Vinny has a very interesting time schedule. He wakes up at the same time as all of the other birds, but I let him stay up later because he's older. I kind of treat my birds a little bit like their kids. Cockatoos need a really good amount of sleep, so always remember that. But for whatever reason, Vinny specifically, and this is where you have to be in tune with your bird, Vinny wants more than anything at nine o'clock at night to start hanging out with me. These birds go to bed at 10, but at nine, that's when Vinny's like, okay, I totally wanna hang with you. There's times when I go to get Vinny out of the cage and I wanna hang with him and he doesn't wanna hang with me. He's like, no. And he is clear about that and most of the other birds are not. They wanna be with me all of the time. When he says no, it's not an untamed bird that doesn't wanna come out cause he's scared. It's a tame bird that is telling me, uh, nah, I think I'm good right now. That's what Vinny is like, but that doesn't mean that your cockatoo would be like that. These birds need a lot of entertainment. And because of their moodiness that they're known to have, and I don't mean moodiness in an aggressive way, even though Vinny has displayed that kind of moodiness, it's a good idea to be in tune with these birds to know when maybe it's time to not push the issue and let them have their relaxing time. Could also be because Vinny's a little bit older, but they do have a lot of independence that a lot of other cockatoos don't have or don't desire at all. Like I swear, Jersey desires absolutely no independence. For those of you who are new to my channel, that is my umbrella cockatoo. She has FOMO. She doesn't want to miss out on anything. She doesn't want to go to sleep when it's time to go to sleep, even if she's tired and cranky. Vinny is the type that I'll pull out the covers and I'll be like, time for bed. And he'll like walk into his cage like, oh, thank God I'm so ready for this quietness. That's what Vinny's like. What are you doing? I hear something bad. Oh, but you look so good and innocent. You look so good. He's so cute back there. Vinny is an excellent dancer. I think that his dancing is unmatched. He does a huge head roll when he dances. I gotta start putting up dancing Vinny videos. If you guys wanna see him on Instagram dancing, just go to my profile at Marlene McCohen and watch him. Or you could use the hashtag dancing Vinny and just check. I think there's like three or four videos of him dancing. He's actually very amazing. He's a great dancer. So I'm gonna have to put some dancing videos for you guys. Except Vinny likes to dance to me singing. So I have to sing like these ridiculous songs like, I don't know, Britney Spears. Not that that's ridiculous. I love Britney, but just saying, that's what Vinny wants me to sing to him. So I have to sing like, hit me baby one more time to get him in the groove or beatbox. And clearly I don't beatbox, I'd love to learn. So I do like this pathetic beatbox for Vinny to dance. He has a lot of soul and a lot of personality. And another thing about Vinny, he's extremely intelligent. He's the creepiest bird in terms of intelligence. It's like he pretends he doesn't understand things, meaning like in terms of responding the way like an African gray does, but he understands things. Like if you say, no Vinny, you can't go outside, he will just like attack and bite you like, okay, we were good until you told me no. Vinny has that kind of attitude. It's very interesting. Vinny really likes girls, but he's a prankster. He pretends he wants to kiss them and love them, but he'll just bite your lip. And it really is kind of dangerous because when people come into the house and he's going like, me, 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 and he makes it look like he wants to kiss, he bites. He also laughs at tragedies, so we call him Evil Knievel. If somebody falls or trips or, I don't know, anything happens to someone, he laughs. He also laughs after he bites you. I don't know where all this came from. I mean, obviously he had all this before we got him. So that's what Vinny is like. He's a lot of fun, he's really cute. He's much more low maintenance compared to the other birds, but that's just his personality. To start with a cockatoo like him, you're talking about a lot of high maintenance. I have a bird that has passed the hormonal stage. He's a little bit older. He has also had his aggressive moments and he likes a lot of alone time. He's kind of like an old geezer sometimes. Like a grumpy old man, that's what Vinny is like. And then he throws these tantrums you guys have seen where he lifts his wings and he tells you stuff. And he says that to every new person that comes into the house. If you come into my house and you wanna meet Vinny, I'll be like, let's meet Vinny. 
and I'll hold him up and he'll lift his wings and he'll just start talking to you and preaching about God knows what. I tell everyone he's preaching about being engaged and not caged and they really like that. So that is what it's like living with this little handsome, silky, smooth kissing man, grumpy old man that I love so much while well, he throws his tantrums and gets in his moods and wants to not hang out with mommy anymore, right? That's what it's like hanging out with him. He also has a little bit of an anger issue. Like if I walk in and walk by him without saying hi, which I don't do, but let's say I had to pick up another bird and walk by him, he'll start banging things in the cage because he wants to let me know that he needs his love and attention. And then sometimes I'll go in to get him after that and he's like, oh no, I'm not coming to you. So they're very smart, extremely intelligent, extremely funny to be with very playful. So that's what it's like living with this guy. I hope you enjoyed this Parrot Tip Tuesday on these special cockatoos. Please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. We love new subscribers. And on that note, I don't think there's anything else to say, but bye bye Thank you guys.